Hey, it's Norm from Tessa.com. I'm here with a great friend, Jeremy Williams. You were, we worked both work with PC Gamer, and you were our first podcast producer on podcast before anyone else on podcast, and now you're on the Oculus Rift, early That's adopter right. for life. Yep. So you're like order number 100? I was order, my order number was 109. But after the last E3, when Carmack, you know, gave all this buzz to the Oculus, I just started following the forums and I jumped on the Kickstarter as fast as I could. I couldn't wait. Amazing. So let's open it up because you have yours. Ours is still in the mail. And let's show people quickly um, not only what you get in the box, but how it connects to your computer. Yeah. So it's the goggles, um, the Oculus Rift right here, which we've seen before. It was at GDC, CES, and a lot of people don't know that's tethered to this breakout box. Permanently, yeah. Yes, and the inputs you get are either DVI or HDMI. Yep. Um, it can take either, uh, no limitations, just video, no audio, Right. and the resolution is 1280 by 800. That's right. Because that's the panel of the screen. It can take in a higher resolution. That's what's cool is that this can actually take the, uh, anything up to, I, I use 1920 by 1200, anything that's 16 by 10, mm -hmm. it works fine. So you can mirror, this is one monitor and your primary monitor is another one. So if you have a 24-inch you know, monitor, it's 1900 by 1200, it'll mirror to this just fine, and this little box will down-res it to the native res of the Oculus. Right. So on your computer monitor, you can at least develop yeah. in, in full resolution. And you can actually read text. Yeah, exactly. That's very important. Um, in addition to that, there is a power cable and a data cable, so you need mini USB, and that's where the sensor information is sent back to your computer. Right. So this has three sensors in it, and all of them um, yeah, travel over USB to the to the computer. And if you don't have that USB cable plugged in, it gives you an error. It says, you know, sensor not plugged in. Okay, and then we've got to talk about the lenses because there's a lot of talk about interchangeable lenses. There's A cup, B cup, or C cup. Right. Um, and there are just right here. How easy is that to, to change in? No. Um, well, it's not they, it's not terribly easy. I mean, it's super easy, but it's, they don't come out, you know, very easily. You have to twist the lenses and pull them out. And then, I don't know if you can get a close-up on that, but you can actually see the, the screen the right inside there, which with the lens out, it's a two-dimensional panel. If you, if you had a video image on there, you'd be able to you know, resolve it right. perfectly. It's a seven-inch, 1280-800 screen, yeah. and it's shiny. It's, a, it's not a matte panel. It's a, it's a reflective panel. Yeah, but they, it takes a little bit of a, mm -hmm. you know, muscle to un unscrew those. So if you don't wear glasses, you can use just the A-series lenses. Um, and there's other, another fine bit of adjustment you can do is for both sides, uh, you can move the distance of the screen from the lens. Yeah. And that is just with a flathead screwdriver. So if you can see right here. But in all of our cases, I, we've, we've all tried yes. it. We all wanted it closest to the, to the lens, even yeah. with glasses on. Right. Um, but if you just move it, you can actually see the panel moving physically away from the lens. Um, back and forth, and you can do this on both sides, right? Yep. You can, and that you would, same yeah, thing probably moves would. it back and forth. You know, one thing I found cool was that the whole unit is powered by five volts. So I, I, it gets five volts over USB, but I don't know if it uses the power for that. But the power adapter that comes with is just a one and a half amp five volt adapter as well. Huh. So they're doing the sensors and the screen itself with um, just five volts. Wow. And make sure there's a power button on here. You can also adjust brightness and contrast. Did you find yourself tuning that at all? I'd never touched it. Okay. No. Just that power button. Yep. All right, well, we're going to turn on the power button as well, put this on, and play some games. I'm ready to put these things on and get in a game. Let's All right. can, we, can we go? Yeah, we can totally go. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to uh, drive, and you're putting on the uh, VR goggles with your glasses on. Yeah, so we tried the different cups. The Oculus comes with three cups. We've talked about this before. There's an A cup, a B cup, a C cup. These are cups. Yeah, th these, th they're basically yeah. they're little lenses that go in here and sit between your eyeballs and the screen. Um, and they offer different levels of correction. So A is for people with good vision, like Jeremy. B is for people like probably Norm who have Decent intermediate vision, vision. Mm -hmm. and then C is theoretically for people like me who have really bad vision. But unfortunately, my vision is bad enough that so this your is too bad. lens correction with your glasses, your prescription is a negative seven. Yeah, so for contacts it's negative seven, for glasses it's negative eight, which is pretty normal because you have a different correction factor. And even which. with the C cups and yeah. the Rift pushed as close to your eyeballs as mm -hmm. possible, it still isn't good enough. So that's why you're wearing glasses. I'm wearing yeah. the glasses. Uh, I, I, we've been using this a little bit uh, while, while we set up for this shot. It's pretty comfortable with the glasses on even. Um, the only challenging part is getting the glasses through the narrow gap in the frame because my glasses are a little wide. It's a cool concept though because you can imagine with the commercial version that you'll be able to buy whatever cup you need. I would hope that I'd be able to go to my optician and say, hey, I need a crazy lens, yeah. please make this happen. But while the, the Oculus guys will release different cups, they won't they're not shape those with a prescription. Yeah. They won't say if you're a certain prescription, you have to rely on a community to f give feedback for that. Yep. So we're also going to put it on and we're going to load up TF2. Uh, with the developer showcase, um, people getting the Oculus Rift developer kit will be able to play a Hawken, 
which is a free-to-play mech game, which we tried out at GDC last week, and Team Fortress 2 from Valve. Unfortunately, right now, Hawken does not have uh, the software to support the Oculus Rift. Right. So with TF2, all the software is there, and to load it up, all we need to do was add uh, the command line. Head tracking is working. Everything is staying directly in front of me, no matter what I do. <laughs> and it was just hyphen VR um, in the command line, just to enable the virtual reality mode. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you're in TF2, and we should also note that uh, the goggles are at 1280 by 800 resolution, and so your desktop has to also be at that resolution when you load it up. At least for TF2. Yeah. So, yeah. And well, just to be clear, I'm sure a lot of people who follow this product know that, but that uh, is split between both eyes. Yeah. So it's, you, it's a vertical split. You only get 640 by 800 in each eye. Right. But the, it's compounded because it's uh, stereoscopic. Yeah. So they are showing slightly different images in each. Um, so Will, you're in the game right now. And yeah. There are several modes of control in TF2, I think eight total, and you can change this in the command line. Uh, Will, I'm going to bring down the command How line for just a so second. How I get so fat? Wow, you can, you can definitely see your belly. So you can, you can change your um, using the command line here. And what's interesting is that this menu for TF2 doesn't take up the full screen. It's taking up just the center of your vision. Because uh, that's where your fo focus is going to be. If, oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that if until it was you said that. blown up to the sides, uh, then you wouldn't be able to see you know, the command line or anything else. Be in your peripheral. Well, that's right. always one of those problems if you've ever used the like the multiple, um, uh, uh, you know, the multiple monitor stuff. So sometimes the UI for the game will be spread out across three monitors. It's really hard to see. So they actually have fixed that here. And the same thing with the HUD, the floating HUD right now, uh, it, and that's something you can adjust. It's in the center of the screen, so you don't need to look to the side just to see how much ammo or health you have. Um, and that can actually be adjusted. Right now, the default is set so that it looks like it's about 500 inches from mm -hmm. your face, and you can adjust that as close as far as you want. Um, so the way this works, so for people who, I, I don't know how well you can tell from the little, from the video that we're showing, but the way this works is right now I'm just gonna move the mouse and there's a bounding box on either side, but there's a center area where I have free movement without really any head movement. Now if I move my head, it's moving independently of the mouse. I don't know which mode we're in right now, Norm. Can yeah, you, can I think the, the default is three, um, but I also want to talk about calibration. Okay. Um, just to start. Oh yeah, we should do that first. In Team Fortress 2, there's a built-in calibration mode. Um, do you want to start that right now and just to yeah. see what it looks like? I just, I'm, the sparks are flying right at me. I, I'm, it's 3D. Jeremy pointed this out and it's it's pretty awesome. Particles like, are successful. The particles, like it looks like there's a fountain of particles in front of me, which you guys probably can't see because you're only seeing So I'm going to load app. up VR underscore. Oh, I put a D in front of there because I was still going forward. VR nice. underscore calibration. Okay, so this will set my inner pupillary distance, right? And this is the distance between your two eyes, which you can get from any so optometrist. Le let, me, let me help you out here, Will. You probably okay. want to close your right eye because the green line is only in your left side. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, so cl close your right eye and look directly at the green line. Okay. And then hit that right button until it goes almost off screen. Okay, so I, you do this for like eight lines, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four but, for each but eye? But the trick is you don't want to look straight and use your peripheral vision. You want to look straight at the line. So I should, should I be looking at that white line or the green line? The green line, oh. and then when it's almost off, you're done. Then hit next. So like the like go until it's off, and then come back a couple. Sure. Yeah. But okay. It, yeah. If you look straight ahead, you'll be able to see it go further, and that's that would be a problem. Oh yeah, sure enough. Okay. So this is well, this is the same thing as that thing that when you go to the optometrist, then they or uh, the optician rather, they hold up that thing that looks like a, a viewmaster, mm -hmm. and you look at a little house. And then the house tells them. <laughs> it tell, they tell you focus on the house or the tractor, and then they say, "Do you oh, see Clifford okay, the big red dog?" You're 172 <laughs> millimeters or whatever the whatever the factor should be. Okay, so then the up and down is less important, right? That's right, but yeah. Staring at that green line as hard as I ever have. So, what in game does this change uh, once the calibration is done? I don't know. Um, I, I think it might be the the position maybe of the two projections, okay. as well as the extent to which they, you know, go out. I, but maybe it would be fun to do a comparison of before and after right. screenshot. So what, what, what they say? Changing. Yeah. yeah well. What it what it said was that they do this changes the render points. So mm. this lets them set the render points accurately, which supposedly helps reduce nausea. What's a render point? Uh, the the camera positions for uh, the game. My inner pupillary distance is... Oh, I see. So how far apart the two cameras are they? And the right? relative position, yeah. Because Team Fortress 2, when you're playing something like the heavy, it's the position of the character's eyes should match your eyes. Um, yes. And so this is for the 3D, mostly, the 3D effect. Um, I think so, yes. This is the only app, like, Oculus hasn't released a way to do this with their 
with their demos, but they want to create a standardized way to get this setting that would apply to all games. And that's something you could theoretically run in the desktop. Yeah, probably be stored in the registry or something like that. Tapa, tapa, tapa. So the reason it's 1280 by 800 is just because of the limitation of the, the, screen, of the Oculus screen right. in the dev kit mode, in which we hope later on they might have a higher resolution screen. Yeah. Uh, that limitation isn't in Unity, though. Right. So w when you run something uh, like uh, you know, you're developing a game, you can run that at basically any resolution? Well, yeah, you can run it. You, right now what we're doing is we're mirroring, mirroring the video output to uh, you know the recorder and to the Oculus, mm. and so we're we're running at 1280 by 100 because we're inside of TF2. But if we were running inside of Unity, you could actually mirror the outputs to both at anything that's 16 by 10. So you could output you know 1280 by or um, 1920 by 1200, and uh, you'd be able to develop using that. And the Unity would downres it to the you know and that's just that box 1280 by 800. Yeah, the early days, right? Everything about this is very early days. Okay, so All I right. just hit next. Mm -hmm. My inner pupillary distance is 65.3 millimeters. Good to know. Do I close now? Do you know what your I, I, I meant to call my, optometry, my optician and see, but I, I did not. Um, I need to go pick up new lenses for him. So, so. it'd be fun to see a comparison screenshot, see what yeah. it did. Oh, yeah. um, wow, the, so the, the 3D effect is much more pronounced now. Can I get in the game? Why am I not in the game? Oh, uh, can you ch hit the uh, period button, Norm? So what the first thing to mention is that it's really hard to tell where you are at any given, like, like where the keys are. It, even I'm a pretty good touch typist. Yeah. This is a bad keyboard for this, because it's one of the Mac keyboards that they don't have good home buttons. Yeah, you'll notice all um, the early Oculus demos that they did all used a gamepad. Right. Yes, I understand why. Uh, I should go to the red team so I can run around. Uh, let's. Let's do... Um... Yeah, so we've calibrated now, and now we want to really show off the different control schemes. Um, th again, that's all changed in the command line, and I'm going well, I'm, I'm to load that up right now, so I can type, okay. in, type in that. Um, the command is just vr underscore move aim underscore mode, and we'll start with zero. Oh, you, didn't, you need a space. Nope, nope, that's back two more. Now a space, now a zero, there, there you go. It's impossible to read that. Yeah. It's really hard to see both on my end on, and on Norm's. Um, OK, so this is, this is mode 0. I'm moving my head now, so I'm moving up and down. And it seems like both my head and the mouse move. This is actually, this, like at first impression, this feels pretty normal. Um, I can't, so I go, like right now I'm pressing forward on the mouse, so I'm going whichever way I walk. This kind of reminds me of the old Looney Boy Quake 2 config where you'd use a trackpad. It basically just... turns the, the head tracker into a mouse. Yeah. And also the mouse is a mouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, this is like the exhibit mouse setup. Okay, let's go to one. All right. I so feel like this is not a not viable long term way to play. Maybe if you're snipering. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, so now my HUD is, seems to be slave to the mouse. I, I got up and down on the. On I really like how the HUD is. Is set in is the fixed. environment. Yeah. This way, so I can steer with the head. This is kind of like being an Apache pilot. This so you, is pretty yeah. awesome. So you always shoot at where you're looking. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time with the home keys But here. you can run a different direction. Oh, um, that's weird. Hold on. So it's, it's as if the gun is attached to your head. Yeah. A head-mounted gun. Yeah, like, but a, you're, like an Apache. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, said. right. You've flown, you flown an Apache. Yeah, uh, of yeah, course. We've all we all flown. Have, of course. Remember when, those, when helicopter sims were a PC stable? <laughs> so, those were the good old days. Um, okay, so I can yeah. look up and down. The HUD is just floating in front of my mouse. Um, and I, I'm not doing any aiming with the mouse. I wish I had somebody here to shoot at. Do you know how to spawn bots, Norm? Uh, not, not in this mode. You have to oh, we're on a server mode. anyway, yeah. so. So uh, I'm going to load up uh, the second mode. Okay. Two. We should get on Twitter and have some people join the server. Okay, so this I am, my head is locked to the the HUD and like it's kind of dragging the mouse cursor. Like I'm not touching the mouse right now, and you're but still my turning. aim cursor is is aiming. Like this looks like this feels almost like Arma, where there's kind of a bounding box. Right. The so that's zone. that's all mouse movement there. Um, that's head movement. But see, look how the see how the cursor. Can you guys see the cursor? Yeah. yeah. It gets drug along with me when I turn my head. Right. So, I so, can't, I so you, I can, you look where you want to shoot, and then you refine with the mouse with yeah. the keyhole. Is that the I can idea? kind of see this being a useful thing. What a happens keyhole. if you don't move your head and just move your mouse outside the keyhole? Then you then it, uh, then it, it, it pans. Drag. Yeah. Okay. Or or up and down too. 
the thing that's amazing about this is I have an incredibly high, I feel like I have much more vertical resolution than I normally do in this game. Really? Like it feels like the floor, like bottom of my field of vision to top of my field of vision is enormous. And, and I guess it's part of the 3D goggle effect, but it's pretty impressive. Um, I'm also noticing in a way that I didn't before that it feels like there's there's like a, a, a something there's a crop on my field of vision. It's like it's not like I'm looking at a screen, but it's like looking I'm, like I'm looking down a very short tube, hmm. um, not in a negative way. Okay, so right. I can so, see this being playable. This is three. This is two. This is two. Oh wow, we haven't gone very far. Now three, and this I believe is the default. So this is. This so this is, is like the last one, except for there's no keyhole. Ah, so, so when you move your mouse around, it won't actually drag your, you won't oh, actually turn. Okay, so there's dudes coming down that tunnel right there. I can shoot at them. Look over here. Oh, no spies behind me. Still <laughs> shooting over there. Oh, not ammo, but. There is um, a little keyhole, because you can still move your mouse around that area. That's true, you can do some, well, the, I, it seems like I'm all mouse. It seems like I'm all mouse now. But I do like the ability to like, you know, no look. When shoot. you hold down the fire button, right, then right, it won't right. actually yeah. uh, shift your. This is a heavy move, right. not a. I, I can see this being much more useful for like spy or scout or something like that. Oh yeah, where you we'll, kind we'll of definitely have to try a scout or a soldier. I think in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so how about let me move to four? Yeah, this I like this one a lot. I feel like this is gonna. This is a high skill mode. All right. Okay. So that's moving my head. I can look up and down with my head. How do I get so fat? And something to point out is that, you know, we just saw you lean forward, and yeah. there is no Z-axis sensor there's in, a, in the development. I mean, there's a little, I don't know like, if there's a sensor, but like, I'm leaning forward and back when I do this. Yeah. It, is it more that it's rotating? I'm pretty sure that's, a, look, I'm gonna shoot my own foot. I can't do that, but. I think that might be a rotation like Norm said. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you think the, so? The, the SDK includes no support for any kind of translation where you're moving through space. Only right. rotations. So ah, you, you it's, it's as if yeah. the, the Oculus Rift is moving around a ball where your eyes are, yeah. um, but okay. not moving forward, backward, or panning left and right or yeah. up and down. And that's something that, that constantly gets brought up in interviews, and they want to work on that for the, the commercial version. Right. So this is number four. This is kind of. Like the, um, so this one will, this one I can move my head freely. It doesn't drag the motion. What does that say? Can anybody see? Oh, we can't read that at all. Uh, I'm gonna, all right. I don't, I don't know what it says. Do you want to drop five? five? Do you like this one, Will? Um, yeah, this one's, okay, so what I was going to say is, this is like number two, I think, except for instead of dragging the cursor with me, I can aim freely. Um, and there's a little bit of a keyhole in the mouse. Mm. So I, I am getting, like, that's me moving the mouse. Yeah. That's me moving my head, which is, like, this This is a pretty, this would be a pretty soft landing, I think, for somebody who's played a lot of TF2. Right. Or maybe a slow-paced game where you're sniping or something, or you want to have precision aiming with the mouse, but still be able to look around yeah. and, and do that with I'm, I'm curious if aiming. I'd have better precision with the mouse than I would with my head. I wonder how they handle the sniper. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll find we'll out. We'll find out in a second. We'll change classes, uh, but where, where I pick your favorite. Let's try five. Okay, now we're getting into experimentals, right? Yep. So five, six, and seven are the experimental modes. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is my mouse. Nope. Okay, so the cursor has nothing to do with where I'm shooting, because look, I'm shooting the, over there. The reticule may as well not be there. Yeah, the yeah. reticule's a trap in this point. <laughs> it's like a point of reference. Oh, look, pew, pew, pew. Um, I do not like this one at all. I feel all like, right. wait, hold on. Oh, that's weird. It's, it's, oh, so you can do a Linda can, Blair thing, right? Where you're. you're uh, <laughs> where's my view suit? Shadow. Wow. Oh. Why didn't nobody tell me my ass was this big? Sorry, I see I was inside you. Whoa! You are inside. Okay, you. now I'm pressing forward. Yeah, and going back. And I'm. Wow, wow, this is really weird. Okay, this is experimental for a reason. Hey, we won! Congratulations, Congratulations <laughs> Red Team. I'm going to give you six. Okay. And we'll load it's up. Time to six me up. Everybody wins with the Oculus Rift. I'm just shooting my gun into the air because I have no idea. Oh wait, there's my cursor. Oh, so this is kind of like that last, well, we gotta get back in the game, but. Teams have been switched, guys. I can't move. There we go. Um, so this is six. This isn't bad. There's keyhole, so that's moving mouse. For mouse. Oh, so I have vertical movement on mouse, but all of my horizontal movement is oh. slaved. And I can, I have free, I have free turn, so oh, that's me wait. shooting ahead. We'll look over there. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Boy, those the particle stuff is really good. Yeah. Um, 
Sorry, easily distracted. Yeah, that that this is pretty good. Like, I I wonder if there's a problem with like slip or something where you lose your point of access with this. This is this up and down with the mouse mm. is a little bit weird, maybe. But you can still look up and then aim. Yeah, I can look independently. It's there's no key. There's no horizontal keyhole really right. to speak of. It's just locked in. It's a lot pretty pretty dialed in. Within I don't. Where the I don't. Is. I kind of don't exactly get this one. Okay, let's okay. try seven. This is the last one. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry about that. That was my bad. I want to hit up to. You know, the real challenge of this is doing this without having your mouth open. Okay. <laughs> um, so I have nothing happening here. Like, I'm, my, I'm moving my head. So this is just straight mouse. Oh my god, that's terrible. Ooh. Okay, so when you expect the movement, you, you talked about this a little bit earlier, Jeremy. When, you, when you're expecting movement and you don't get it, yeah. it's weird things happen in your head. Like, I, I turn my head and I expect to, to turn. Seven looks like not a good mode to play in. Seven. It's basically turning oh. off the. Oh, the, God. Okay, put it back on like three or four, please. Yeah, so I'm going to close four, my eyes. Because it sounded like four was one you liked the most. Why don't you change classes and play something like a scout where there's fast movement? Let's, let's, let's do a gradual increase, man. Oh, let's um, do rocket jumping. Yeah, hit, hit, <laughs> hit uh, comma. Rocket jumping. And give me, give, me a, give me like a, a sniper. Let's, let's ease into this. Is that number uh, eight? How many hours do you? Oh. You gotta, you gotta kill yourself or change teams. Um, hit, hit, yeah. There you go. Um, can you hit eight again, please? I can't, I can't tell where it is on this keyboard. My train, it's going backwards. The good thing I, about this rendering at twelve eighty by eight hundred is your frame rate's gonna be good. So we have, yeah. we have a uh, anti-aliasing inject all the way up. Yes. But they also recommend that uh, you turn VSync off. Norm, do you use the default sniper? Well, how many hours do you, do you have in place. sniper? Oh. So look down the scope. Yeah. I'm afraid. Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> Let me find, I'm trying what, to find someplace far what away. What if it only gives you your right eye? That would be interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're talking like a game designer now. I don't think I've ever played this map before. All right, well, you want to zoom in? I'm trying to find someplace that's far away. It takes a minute. And also, I have never played this map before, just for the record. <laughs> Well, this is. Oh. There we okay. go. Whoa! Okay, I got both eyes. Huh. Huh. Okay, so this is full. Whoa. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that is, that oh, is. that's not good. What does that look like? Uh, the it means I'm now I'm looking at the side of the tube. Okay. This isn't like um like say playing a first person shooter like playing Call of Duty with shutter glasses on though. So when you're moving your mouse, you're actually moving the entire t tube. In, the entire site. Yeah, so the, the my mouse scope. controls everything. The viewpoint is independent of the mouse. Oh, yeah. that um, is and the very keyhole, cool. so the keyhole on the sniper zoom is real tight. So like, okay, so I'm gonna unzoom. Mm -hmm. The keyhole is pretty loose here, right? Like yeah. that's all mouse movement. Zoomed in, you it, it stays in real tight. Yeah. Um, the idea is you're moving the gun. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, it looks like there's no third person uh, taunts. No, or, first, or first person taunts default. is default. I think it's an option. Yes. But it's kind of fun to taunt in the first person. Yeah. yeah. So how about, Will, let's jump you to a different class. Okay. Um, uh, pyro, maybe? That's pretty fast. Yeah, the, yeah. the fire should look pretty good. Too. Oh, you still need um, to kill yourself. Swap well, a different team. Your All obsession right. with me dying, I don't know how I feel about it. And let's watch those particle effects again. It is very cool just to see the oh gun from that first person move <laughs> independently. Does it look good? looks really good. Um, the, just the particles bouncing off the walls. Like, yeah. you, like this is... If this takes off, it's going to render a whole new generation of particle effects. <laughs> it's going to be like 1998 all over again. People are going to go so crazy. So fire up in, the, up in the air? Fire yeah. looks pretty rad. Wow. Uh, of course, you know, the other thing that I immediately notice is that when it clips through the ceiling, mm -hmm. it is super obvious. Huh. Like in a way that it probably isn't when you're 2D, just playing 2D. That's all pretty right. good. Okay, so this is, wow, this is a lot faster. So let's change you to... Hold on, hold on. I'm going to go, let me, let me acclimate a little bit here. Right. Just to be clear, the instructions say... When you start this, you're supposed to kind of ease into it over Ten a minutes at a time. time how long your have, VR legs. Yeah, how long have we been going so far? A, a little bit. I don't feel like I'm going to hurl. Calibration helped. Yeah. Um, I do feel like I'm having trouble keeping my mouth closed. You, you played this before at, uh, what was it, CES? Uh, I played it. I guess you haven't played TF2, but you've used the Oculus before. So yeah, I played the Doom 3 demo at um, uh, PAX, East, PAX Prime last year. And then I played Hawken for about twenty minutes at or fifteen minutes at um, GDC last week. Okay. Um, this is a much better experience than Hawken was. 
Really? But Hawken was a kind of Hawken felt like a tech demo, where this feels like a real game. Okay. I kind of want to go out and get another. Let's let's do the scout, and then I want to go out and get another server and and play some yeah, real. Yeah, play, play rocket launcher or play soldier. I'm gonna give you actually oh, kill you. Oh first. wow! So my menu is now slave to my. Yep, just like the HUD. That's, that's weird. Looking, looking behind you. you, know, you hey, can, look, there's my shoulder. You can swivel in your chair at 360 degrees. I don't think I can because of all the wires I have attached to me right now. I'm just saying you could. In theory. <laughs> um, right. uh, scout me, Norm. This is going to be real bad. Joey, I hope there's a bucket. Actually, you need, you need to swap teams? Yes. I do need to swap. I have a kind of sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, wah, see wah. what the double jump looks like oh, from the first person. Oh, this is going to be hard. You don't say. Yeah, good luck. Have you played Scout yet? Uh, so, what's your experience? You've had this for a weekend now and, and a little three bit? Three days. Jeremy? Oh, yeah, yeah three days. Um, I don't know. It's okay. Where's the door? Yeah, so oh what has your God. experience been, Jeremy, playing this? Uh, I, you know, I have a hard time playing this. I, I found, I, first of all, it's hard to say because when you first step in here, you just want to look at things. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't want to play the game. You just want to, you're finally existing in this world that you spent countless hours mm -hmm. watching on a two dimensional screen. Uh, so you just want to sort of examine, uh, but... Oh my god, I never would have been able to make that on, I don't think. I, I think part, something that people are going to find is that th <laughs> this Sorry. isn't a way to improve your, your marksmanship in a first-person shooter. Right. You know, it's not, a, it's not a way to play the game any better. It's a way to immerse yourself in the world better. So it's immersion. It's all about immersion, yeah. It's not necessarily about being a better player, because... Uh, it's, it's, it's not a higher DPI mouse or, or <laughs> right. a high-resolution monitor. Right. It, it is... It, a different way of experiencing the game. I, yep. Dude, I am. I think that this is a competitive advantage if you take the time to learn how to use it. Really? Yeah. yeah I should, think we the ability need to get a pro gamer in here, wear the Oculus Rift. Yeah. And I think. See yeah. How he fares. I think the ability we'll to look to over shoulder look, and like there are definite. There is a definite downside to this, right? The 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 control stuff is a little bit weird and is going to take some getting used to to figure out what the right way to do this is. But the ability to look over here and shoot there. Is huge. I mean, that's something you can't do in first-person shooters. Yeah, it is something you can't do. But you can flick your mouse so fast between those two spaces that I, that's what, typically what you would do. Right. But you and can do that too, though. You would get the. Yeah, you you can. You're right. You're right. It, I suppose if you can find a way to maximize that, I just feel that there's a there's a certain amount of disorientation that I get running around in the game that I don't get with a mouse and keyboard. Um, let's Maybe it's something you get used to. Let's you try a different in input mode. Hold on, uh, let me let me figure out what input mode I want. Uh, put me on soldier for a sec. Okay. Um, Rocket yeah. jumping should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, okay. the best thing about playing Hawken, at least, was flying up above the city and yeah. looking down. That's so imagine right. doing a rocket jump and then looking down. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to do demo man because I think I'll have a better chance aiming. You got it. Uh, yep. Well, that's, I'll, I'll try Soldier first. I can kill myself with this. It works out. Oh, that, you're oh, a demo wait, man. Wait, I'm a demo man. I believe I can fly. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Okay. Feel, I mean, that's not as fast I'm gonna as moving die right the now. scout. Oh, there you go. Chunks. Um, and that was weird because it took you out of the body. Your head it, wasn't lying on the ground. Well, usually... You, death yeah, cam. Yeah, yeah, I guess you don't have the, the, the Robin Williams effect. Um... This is, yeah, I want to get out and play people. I feel like maybe we should just get on Twitter and get people to join this server. All right, well. well. Um, well let's see what I can. Oh, that's, that is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Are you looking around when you're, when you're in this uh, there? I'm not that, I don't have that much presence yet. Presence of mine. Um, it's a little, it's a pretty disorienting. I mean, not in a terrible way, but like, I just, you know, you know. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah, you know, I ended up aiming the right way, though, so I guess I'm doing something right. I'm getting there. It's like, I feel like if you spent 40 hours with this, then you could do some magical stuff. Like it feel, you, know, you know how sometimes you feel when, you're, when you see something new? It, it's, there's a steep learning curve here. There's a, there's a low level of wonder and a steep being actually able to be better at, at this than with a normal um, uh, mouse and keyboard yeah, I'm and still, screen. I'm, I'm curious to see if it ever becomes a competitive advantage. I, I doubt they'll let people use this in competitive. Hey, somebody just joined. All right, you have someone to engage. Do you feel like right now having just the three axes of movement, the head turning, uh -huh. uh, that is enough? Well, it's six for, axes because it's okay. So we can yeah, I can so twist. Yep. I can go up and down. Um, you know what I, I found when yeah, when, you, when you tilt your ear to your shoulder, 
They've done, they've done that in demos, and it, to us, that looks really interesting because we've never seen that before in a video game. But it's, mm -hmm. my perspective isn't really changing at all. But to you, it does, it's like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Why wouldn't it do that? It's like in a, yeah. in a, a space simulator when you hit the, you know, the roll button and you're yeah. rolling a plane, um, now you can do it with your head. Right. That was not what I meant to do, just full disclosure. Um, yeah, I can see how this, would, this is going to be a thing. Like so why don't you uh, change to a rocket launcher and see if you can kill someone. Okay. We can't finish this me, uh, without you getting at least one kill. Let me... There you go. Chunky. Um, so right now, uh, they're shipping out the developer kits. Um, only a couple hundred have been shipped out. Uh, I think they said they've sold about 40,000 so far wow. through Kickstarter and their website. Is that right? Yeah. Um, they sold seven thousand to the Kickstarter, and then another thirty-three thousand. That's crazy. It, it, that's uh, from their uh, from one of their presentations, wow. and there's a there's a document online where we were tracking that didn't work. the sh shipment status, the delivery status, and yeah. as of right now, I think only like five five or six hundred have been delivered or have confirmed at least online. Um, so you're playing as a soldier now. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't have a direct hit, although it may be easier with this because 3D aim is probably not a bad thing. Did that other guy join? Oh, um... Yeah, it looks like you have someone to kill. Is he on the train? Or is he just lagging? See if you can hit a stationary target. I can hit a stationary target, come on. So the interesting thing about this is the the, the cursor actually... One of the things we talked about uh, when we saw the guys at GDC... Oh, oh there you go. Rocket... Oh, come on, Will. Oh, you got him. Wow. Did I kill him or did he kill you, himself? Uh, oh, yeah, I killed him, yay! You killed him. Yeah, maybe not so difficult. Very impressed, Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did the song. <laughs> That's um, I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm strongly pro this. I wish it was higher resolution, which is... Oh, well, yeah. Uh, somebody says, he says, I'm, are you trying the glasses? Can you respond for me, Norm? My social secretary. Oh, he's on the train, he's on the train, he's on the train. Boom. How does he know you have the, the rift? I'd say Norm tweeted. No, is this, it might be Evan. Maybe Joey tweeted. He's coming out this way. That's tricky. So, it, do you find that moving your body with with the mouse, which also moves your orientation with uh -huh. the headset, do you find that to be disorienting? Wow. Do you have to get used to that? Um, yeah, it's a little weird. Like, but I know it, some people I who feel play like, first-person shooters who move their bodies, like they yeah. try to dodge stuff. Yeah. And I can imagine them wanting to do that even more right. when wearing this. Yeah. A lot um, of people do that when like playing race games. I mean, the the leaning. Right. There's a psychology to it. I find when I move the mouse and, and, I, twist my, oh, I, and I twist my body, that um, it's, it's, it's a jarring effect that because my vision is being moved, but I'm physically not moving my body, and it's, it's sort of weird and unexpected. Um, I, I don't, I actually, that hasn't bothered me, because I'm, I'm kind of used to, like, I'm moving the mouse right now. The one thing I would say is that I'm noticing that the panel is pretty low, uh, a, a, low light, a high latency panel, rather. Um, well, they've reduced that as much as they can. Yeah. And VR specialists have said that you really need under 20 milliseconds of total latency oh, with control and, and, and uh, refresh on the, on the glasses um, for it to be indistinguishable from reality. Uh, there's also um, the panel actual, the pixel refresh and um, the yeah. persistence of the pixels. About. And so you get something like judder and smearing. So if you're moving your head real fast, your eyes fast. Yeah. Um, Did you see that air shot? Did you get an air it's amazing, shot? amazing, man. <laughs> Still got it. I haven't played TF2 in like two you years. You might be the world's greatest VR TF2 player. Right now? Yeah. No, right now. Not for long. Yeah. For like <laughs> the next week, week and a half maybe? Yeah. Hold on. Does, this, does, does the fact that we're playing this on Norm's account mean he's going to get the uh, Oculus hat? Oh, it's the, maybe. No, it doesn't. I don't think you, you know it. You might. You might get it. <laughs> <sighs> um, okay. I'm, I'm in. All right. Uh, let, let's back out and show us uh, just some other demos. Okay. Um, oh, my take, God. Take it off. Oh. Take it off. Take off the glass. Oh, that's horrible. That was Woo. a while. How long were you in there? Um, I don't know. What's the, what's like the time maybe, What's the time on the counter, yeah, Joey? I think we're there just like half, a little more than half an hour. I don't... That's a while. Yeah. yeah how, okay. how are you acclimating to reality? So there's... There's a... Like, there's a... Focus... Focusing is a little weird now. Right. Like, I, I'm used to... I, I'm very clearly focusing on something that's, like, right here. Yeah. And that... Like, even though it doesn't feel like that, it's it's weird. Like, I probably shouldn't drive for a little bit, it feels like. It's, in, it's one of those situations. Uh, and my, I, my face is really sweaty. I feel like I probably have pretty good marks, like, 
here, it's all red. here, and yeah. all through here. Like ski goggles, yeah, you've been skiing yes. for a weekend. It's, um, Except instead of being sunburned around the outside, you're, you're red on the inside. I, so we have the strap all the way out. I wish it actually got a little bit bigger. Um, I have kind of a big melon, as I think you're part of the Big Head Club too, Jeremy. Um, I could use more strap here and, and be pretty happy about that. But it should be relatively tight because um, you don't want the glasses to be moving. You don't want to be tight like a ski goggle, though. You yeah. want it to be comfortable. Yeah, they say, you, they say you want it to kind of move and breathe. Like, there's enough room that I can see around the edges of my nose and stuff like that, which isn't distracting at all. Yeah. Um, it's not a bad experience. I feel like I could go more without, you know, chundering. Yeah, well, you clearly have uh, some innate ability. Aptitude. Well, Aptitude. Yeah. Finally, so I'm good um, for something. <laughs> As a developer, you're developing in Unity, and right now the SDK or the Unity SDK works with the Oculus Rift. Yeah, yeah, they're releasing the Unreal SDK, but not until later this month. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your experiences with that so far? Is it relatively easy? Or? It's super easy. Yeah, it's okay. so it's so easy. Um, it, Unity itself? You, no, no, no. Unity, yeah, Unity is a really accessible game engine to develop in, especially as far as being a 3D engine, but. All that you have to do, you can literally make a plane to walk on and then drag and drop one thing, which is a prefab, it's, a, it's an Oculus character controller, into your scene and d then hit play. And that's it. And the, suddenly you're walking around your plane with the Oculus Rift on in 3D. And in your, the world you're creating, and then you can create yeah. assets and yeah. drop and so, things. So Oculus just provided that, you know, those assets for you and make it super easy. You can make any world that you want, and then all you have to do is drag this character controller in there. and it's, it has two cameras, one for each eye, mm -hmm. and all the orientation is locked down for the mouse for what it should be and turned on for the Oculus um, you know, sensors where it should be. And um, it's, it's really incredibly easy. I was really impressed. So if you want to noodle around, it is a thing that is easy to do. Yeah, and, they, and for, like, what, one thing that, that was announced recently was that you do, they do require a pro license. Oh, okay. Uh, and so that's a $1,500 investment. Ooh. But compared to the if you go pro and you start making a lot of money with Unreal, it makes more sense to do it with Unity. But um, well, in Unity it makes it's easy to publish games, not just on Oculus. You can also release them on iOS, right? And Android, yeah, sort of save it, whatever too. you want. But they they also have announced that there'll be a four month free trial for Oculus developers. Oh, that's good. So if you just want to try it out, then you're in yeah. for three hundred bucks, and no, you're in for nothing. Well, oh, yeah, for the Oculus, for the Oculus yeah, yeah, yeah. but exactly. yeah, exactly. That's good. So, and that's a great way to try it out. I mean, just hop in there and follow some Unity. Right. Um, tutorials on YouTube and just get started. So then, this is one of the Unity. De this is one of the demos that ships with the. This is with not the Unity. This is actually a you know 200k file huh. in its entirety, and this is made you know in, in presumably C plus plus or something by the Oculus team using the raw Windows SDK. Hmm. Um, just just so people have an idea, like what's you've built some games before. Um, we we have seen your work on such in such projects as Core and. Um, That's about it. Okay, yeah. cool. Gamer CD. <laughs> PC gamer CD. Um, but so, what's your level of like programming expertise? Well, like what? what? Uh, I I am not a programmer. Okay. Um, I I did a lot of scripting uh, for Core, and that's thankfully primarily what you're doing in in Unity too. Okay. It's really a scripters engine. Um, it's uh, it's more or less you can access any function through their version of JavaScript, uh, and so there's there's certainly some programming, but they simplify so much. If you want to look at something, you don't have to do the trigonometry. You can just type "look at" and mm -hmm. then provide the you know the game object that you want to that you want to focus the camera on. So it's definitely accessible. Um, but I, I wouldn't consider myself a programmer because I have too much respect for the real ones. And when you're making a game or conceptualizing a game, are there things that you're noticing that the Oculus Rift lends itself to that you couldn't do with other games, and or things that it, well, you I, thought would be fun but maybe not so yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. I, like, well, I'm really impressed to see Will's experience with TF2. That gives me a lot of hope for first-person shooters. But uh, my impression was that it's it, it's a detriment to to the skill of playing an FPS, having played them for a skill-based FPS. A skill-based FPS. I, I still I still feel that you're you know at your best if you're just on a monitor with mouse and keyboard because that's the interface it was designed for. Um, I could see the Oculus. I, creating entire new markets for just exploration games. I could see a resurgence of adventure games where mm -hmm. much slower paced, you know, walking around uh, and finding objects or traveling. I could see, you know, even um, the realty, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, like educational stuff. Educational stuff. I mean, any place that you want to travel or do any kind of, um, you know, experience of visiting a place without actually having to go there, it, it really delivers the 
uh, the uh, impact of actually being transported. The, the, yeah, the, the, I, know we've, I know we feel like we've beaten this into the ground at this point, but the effect of full field of view immersion is, is difficult to discount. And it has problems. I mean, the th the th when those control schemes were going wrong, they go wrong in a really, really terrible way. Yeah. Um, and I think my hunch is that probably different people will be sensitive to that at different levels. Um, and probably it's, it's one of those things like motion sickness that once it starts going, it's not going to get better unless you stop and go do something else and look at the mountains or something and, and find, you know, find, it, find the horizon. And, yeah. and as guys who are, you know, we follow hardware and hardware trends, it's easy to see, look forward and see how this could be improved. And this being a, a Gen 1, pre-Gen 1, how, I mean, two years on the line, it's not just going to be this. It's going to be much more advanced. I, right. I think right now this is not for everybody. I mean, it's really low res. Uh, it's got a lot of problems. But yeah, if you start to look d down the line, a couple of years, even a year from now, this I, I think this is the beginning. This is a new medium. You know, it's not just a way to, to enhance the games that we're playing already. This is something brand new. This is this is immersion, and you have to design things that actually take advantage of this as opposed to a two-dimensional screen. It's not like you can take Skyrim and and just run a filter on it and yeah. jam it out. I think you can, and people will do that. But I think it's really going to shine are projects that are made, you know, for it mm -hmm. because uh, it's it's. Once you take away the ability to, to see anything else in the world, you're actually transported into that space. Uh, once you move through the space that you want to go at a different speed, uh, you want to interact in different ways, being able to look everywhere uh, adds all new type of gameplay possibilities. Well, hopefully it's not just the fad, you know, like motion control. It's Wave two? I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe I've read too many sci-fi novels, but I believe this is the tip of something massive. I mean, this is, I could see people who aren't into computer games at all you know, maybe a couple years from now. You know, maybe maybe it takes longer. Maybe it's five years from now. But this is going to be a way for them to achieve relaxation, to just get get away from from the world. Well, the th I can see people getting addicted to this. Circuits. <laughs> the thing, the thing that's the thing is, you can look at what they built so far and extrapolate to technology that's available today. The higher higher density, you, you, we see yeah. 1080p phones on five 1080p screens on five inch phones. This is a seven or eight inch screen. There's no reason that the pixel density can't go up, especially as they start to scale more and, and more. Different types of LCDs, OLEDs, yeah. different screen panel technology. It, the pixel density is what hurts this the most. The I pixel think. density is... is well, but I think the response, density, I think the response pixel response is actually worse yeah. than the pixel density, that doesn't depending bother on me, the application. The blurriness yeah. factor, that doesn't bother me so much as that screen door effect. The juddering is... The, 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 the pixel blur... Well, I'm not going to get it here because I'm in a menu. When I was moving fat, when I, I think that's the thing that was bad about the Scout. Yeah. You're moving oh, so fast that, that yeah. it was like running down a tunnel and you were on some sort of, you need mushrooms or something, and everything's blurring out behind you and the colors are running, yeah. and it was, yeah. it was a little gnarly. Yeah, that, um, that's hardly even worth talking about. All these problems are going to solve in the next generation. Yeah. The interesting thing to me is it's a little bit heavier than the demo that we had at, that I, that I had PAX, the original one with the ski goggle band. That really? That looked like something a dude had made in his garage yeah. because a dude had made it in his garage. Because um, I have the Sony HMZ T1. Those things are, those are and that's super the most heavy. uncomfortable yeah. thing I've ever worn. Yeah. This, by comparison, was remarkably. Oh, bad. dramatically bad. Because it, it, it's the full, the third strap and the full band. I actually bought a third strap from the HMZ. Oh. It doesn't do any good. But this, this is much lighter and it's just much more comfortable. I was going to say you don't notice it after, like after ten minutes. I, I, I mean, I notice it because it's pressing on my face and I have glasses yeah. on. And it's a little, like that stuff is a little bit uncomfortable. I think I would definitely, if I was going to be playing frequently, I would. I would bust out the contacts more often. Right. And, and those guys are projecting forward with them. lighter glasses. They want to target somewhere around 200 grams. Maybe in the future put stereoscopic cameras on the front for augmented reality so you can see mm -hmm. what the camera's seeing. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Will, you mentioned wanting to hook it up to uh, a GoPro. And, yeah. And do some fun or uh, pair remote GoPros. control, you yeah. know, helicopters, airplanes, mechs, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Jeremy. We'll have to come, have you come back uh, when we get our Oculus Rift and we can have some TF2 deathmatching or something. You can, you can kick my butt while I'm just <laughs> looking around. All right, well, that will do it for us for today. Will's going to continue playing TF2. Uh, we'll have more Oculus Rift VR coverage on Tesla.com. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you, see you all next time. Bye.